All right, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, uh, whatever it is, wherever you are, hope you're having a good one. Uh, today we will be tying a wounded piper, a variation on a piper pattern. Uh, they're an important one for us uh, here in New Zealand. They make up a key part of the food chain for a lot of the predatory fish that we target, uh, ranging from kingfish, yellowtail kingfish, uh, kawai, and snapper, plus uh, pretty much anything else that will uh, take them if we can. Uh, material wise, it's a bit of poly yarn and red in the bottom, uh, predator fibres, uh, we've got some pearl crystal flash, uh, some Skeena blend semper flash, cashmere monkey, just a generic hollow eye, quite a larger size, and we have some of the mirror tinsel and some fluoro orange pertagon body in the nose. A uh, couple key points to make around tying it, um, sorry unfortunately the length of the flight pops out the frame. Uh, but you want to make sure that end of the fly is nice and tapered. Uh, looking like that, you can see that flash coming through a bit better there as well. So it's just teasing out the ends of the uh, predator fibers and the cashmere monkey uh, to make that nice uh, tapered end to the fly. And the other one as well, when you're uh, selecting a material or cutting a material off, uh, you don't want to use too much. Uh, you want it nice and sparse. You can see you can almost see the uh, bodkin uh, through the back side of that. Uh, you just want that sort of translucency uh, to it. But that being said, we'll crack into it. I hope you enjoy and I hope it's a helpful uh, pattern for you to have in your saltwater fly boxes. Cheers. All right, first things first, we're tying on an Arex SA220 streamer hook in a number two. Uh, you can tie bigger, smaller, uh, whatever you need. Uh, you're starting this hook, or this fly rather, uh, almost right on the bend. Uh, majority of the material is tied off the back of the hook. Uh, so you just want to get the startings of your thread base in there. We'll do a bit more to the front uh, afterwards when we get the beak going. Just get rid of your tag end. Right, ne next up we'll tie in the poly yarn. Uh, you just want to take a, a strip of it and I use about a quarter to a third and just taper out uh, the end a little bit. Uh, this imitates an injury or wounded gills with some blood flowing back from it and we're just securing it in right where we started that uh, first thread wrap. So uh, okay, we're just giving that impression of a, a piper that's already had something have a go at it. You can substitute this for a sparkle dub, uh, red predator fiber, or whatever you want to use. Uh, but I like the poly yarn. Cool, and just get that nice and secured in, just so it's hanging up the top. All right, next up we've got our predator fiber. I do apologise, a lot of shooting out the back of the or side of the frame of the camera, but just keep in mind as you're building it, you're looking for that uh, tapered look. Yeah, so when you cut it off. Uh, it's going to be a bit square, just just tease out a few of the bits, a few of the fibres, sorry, um, just so they uh, form a, a little taper there. And then lengthwise, you want to go about double uh, the length of the hook shank, and again, just keep it sparse. Uh, you don't need too much material, you just want enough uh, there so that they can see it, but it's just going to be that nice translucent sort of look on the fish. And then just get rid of the excess and you can use that uh, to make your next one. And just make sure it's nice and secured in. Just working in around that, you don't catch your thread on the hook point. Just get it nice and tight. Cool. Alright, next up we have our flash that we're going to put in there. Uh, now we're using some of the Skeena blend, uh, Semper Flash, which is the uh, purpley green, uh, you can see there, and Crystal Pearl, uh, both from Semper Fly. Uh, it just gives that the fish some of that reflectiveness that uh, you see. I don't know, if, it's a bit hard to tell in that photo to begin with, uh, but they're really actually quite tough to see on the water. They swim near the near the surface, so they uh, just fit in with that shimmer and shine, and uh, this helps to emulate some of that. Again, we're just layering it up. 
it's just wrapping itself a little bit there but that's all right just get this back out of the way throw it away uh, before I do that if you are tying them bigger or if you want more flash generally I'll just fold that over and tie it in secure it um, but these ones I don't need to you can save that for your next one as well and you want lengthwise you want it just reaching out to the uh, same point as that predator fiber and just get it in nice and secure there we go All right, next up is our Semperfly cashmere monkey which we're running along the, the top of the fly and I'm just using the grey colour, it's just slightly uh, darker uh, than the uh, predator fibre um, a bit stiffer as well, just gives it a bit of a bit of slight bit of contrast uh, between the two materials now you want that to go back just slightly longer than the uh, predator fibres again you're looking at about two times the hook shank so if you wanted to be super specific maybe yeah, uh, two shanks and a quarter or an eighth. You really don't want to go that much further. And just get that secured in as well. At this point, you've got the body built up, and we're going to do a few things with UV resin uh, just to make sure you don't get the uh, tail wrap. All right, next up, we are working on preventing the uh, tail wrapping. Uh, with the long tail behind the shank, it can often twist around, be pulled in between the shank and the hook point. Uh, and the best ways to start preventing that is to uh, get some UV resin in there. Now I'm using the NOTAC UV resin uh, thin from uh, Semperfly. And all you want to do is get some on your bodkin and we're just going to start painting it that's probably the only term I can think to do but applying it or painting it uh, to the start of the body. And you just want to start where you don't want to go all the way back uh, you just want to build it up uh, maybe inch back uh, along the top and along the side of the uh, predator fibers and the cashmere monkey and the flash uh, generally I try to keep it off the uh, poly yarn uh, you can take your bodkin and poke it through a little bit which will get it inside there you're going to get some on that poly yarn but I just try to keep it clear of it as much as I can which allows it to uh, wiggle around a bit more now uh, once you've got it on there uh, you've got to cure it uh, so crack out the UV torch and uh, just get that nice and uh, cured I find I try to hold it out uh, sort of in the shape uh, that you want it to go like if you think of something like a surf candy you're kind of doing similar and just building that body and just getting it to have a nice tapered uh, sort of look cool all right next we need to put the eyes on uh, hopefully you remember back to the photo i had in the intro of this but i uh, got quite large eyes to the size of the head and body now i'm just using a large uh, hollow tinsel eye you can use the domed ones as well if you would would like but uh, it's going to get a dab of that uh UV resin over here. You can use super glue if you want, but I'm using this anyway. And I just uh, keep on going. It works well. I haven't had any issues with eyes falling off or anything like that. So really, there uh, has been no reason to change. You just want to get it kind of centered, just over where you've been tying in uh, your materials there, and then just give it a zap with the uh, UV torch, just to uh, secure it on there. Now we're actually going to be filling up in between the eyes as well uh, with the UV resin just because it's some more support and we'll be covering up the beak as well or the nose of the fly. Uh, from there you just want to do the same on the other side as well. Uh, it's important just to get them uh, nice and in line uh, together. And just another dab of that resin and then a uh, slider on there. Let's get it nice and square. Actually, it's quite handy filming this because I can actually see where they're, they're lined up and on the little camera beside it. But once you've got it there, uh, just secure it in with that uh, UV torch as well. Cool. 
Right, onto the nose or the uh, beak of the fly. Uh, for this one, I will be using the Simplify Mirror Tinsel. It's in a color called Mirage Iris. Generally, I'll cut off a few inches so I can do a, a few flies with it, but it's got a cool little shine to it. Sort of pearly uh, iris color. Uh, you just want to tie it in, uh, in behind the eye. Get it nice and secured in there. And then just wrap your thought, uh, thread forward. Uh, you're just going to wrap that material uh, over top of it. You just want close touching wraps. Uh, all the way up to the eye of the foot. There we go. And then we'll just wrap this forward. Yeah. It's nothing overly complicated. You just keep wrapping. It just adds a bit more flash to the fly. Um, uh, the saltwater species here, uh, especially kawai, uh, really respond well to, to flash. Especially when they're uh, feeding hard. Anything flashing away draws your eye and movement and you know, they'll just smash it. It's quite exciting. And once you get to the uh, eye of the fly there, or the hook eye rather, uh, you just secure that in. Just a few wraps and we're going to cover up these uh, threads with the little orange hotspot using the Pertagon body. Alright, yeah, if you remember back to that photo right at the start, uh, these fish have a, a little orange hot spot uh, right at the tip of the tip of their beak. Uh, for that, I quite like using the uh, Pertagon body and fluoro orange. And we're just going to secure that in. It's nice and secure. Let me get that out of the way. Get rid of the little tag in there. And then just wrap it forward. Uh, if you wanted, you could substitute it with an orange um, tying thread. Or any other uh, orange uh, colored material or whatever color you choose to do the tip of it. And just cover up that tying thread that you tied in the hollow uh, the tinsel before. Cool. Get rid of that. Last but not least, uh, a little old whip finish. Uh, if you wanted, you could go fish it like this, but that tinsel. Pertagon body is just going to get chewed up. I did kind of mention it before, but what we're going to do just it gives the fly a whole lot more support. Uh, we're just going to cover in between the eyes. As we go, we'll just give that a little black with the uh, UV torch. So that's just going to give your eyes a little bit more support. And then we just want to get this all covered. It looks like a bit there, but we're going to spread that around. Build up a bit of a nose on it. Uh, if you wanted, you could fill in underneath the eye as well. Generally, I don't. Don't worry, it's not absolutely necessary. It's got enough holding it on already. I just get that nice and covered. Try to get it as smooth as you can, and then zap it uh, with the old UV torch again. It only needs a little bit on each side. But yeah, this is a yeah, great pattern to have here uh, down under in New Zealand. Uh, if you're coming down these ways to fish the salt, be it to chase uh, kingfish, or if you want to get a few kawai, which are great fish as well, definitely recommend tying a few of these. Alrighty, there you have it, one wounded piper uh, saltwater fly. Again, keep it nice and sparse and taper off that end. Those are the key points when you're tying it. Uh, simple fly but a, a definite staple uh, for down here. Now if you're coming these ways again like I said just before if it's just a fish for trout tie a few go out catch some saltwater fish and you'll be having some fun as well. Uh, but yeah hope you've enjoyed it. All the best enjoy tying it.
have a good one happy time cheers